It's important to remember that angular momentum is a vector, and the direction of that vector should make sense to us if we think back to how we had defined torque, angular velocity, and angular acceleration. Let's take some examples of a spinning disk in, under different scenarios to make sure that this angular momentum vector makes sense to us. If a disk is spinning with constant angular speed, in other words, its angular acceleration alpha is equal to zero, then that means that there's no force acting on the disk. The velocity of some point on its rim is constant, and so is omega equal to a constant. And if omega is equal to a constant, then the angular momentum, which is equal to I omega, is also a constant. And if L is a constant, there shouldn't be a torque, because we're told that torque is equal to delta L over delta T. It's a change in angular momentum. So we should just have an omega vector pointing straight up, and a velocity vector which processes around the rim of the disk. If, however, the disk is speeding up, that means its angular acceleration is positive or pointing upward, then what happens to a velocity vector of some point on the rim? Well, it starts out at some value v naught, and the angular speed omega starts out at some value omega naught pointing straight up. But if the thing is speeding up, then v dot gets a little bit bigger. When it, although it's moving around the rim, its magnitude, v prime, is a little bit bigger. And at a later time, v double prime is even bigger. And in this time, omega is growing too, because omega has a time cross r has to equal v. So for in order for the v to allow v to get bigger, omega has to get bigger in magnitude. And finally, when we get to V final, where the, the, the speed of the rim has grown up to some final value, we get up to omega final. Let's compare omega final to the initial ang angular speed omega naught. Notice that it's bigger. So let's talk about what has changed in the angular velocity vector. It's taken on a delta omega, which is equal to omega final minus omega initial. So it's grown. This means that there's a change in angular momentum, too because delta L should equal I times delta omega. And that means delta L points up in this picture. Now if velocity is increasing, linear velocity that is, that must mean that there's some force pointing along with it. Remember, a force pointing in the direction of motion causes a change in a, a positive change in kinetic energy, a larger speed. So the force has to point along with the velocity vector. Now if you think about the right-hand rule, torque is equal to r cross f. So imagine a point r reaching from the pivot point out to where the velocity vector is, and using your right hand and curling your fingers from r over to f, you'll find that your thumb points straight up. So the torque vector points straight up. Well that's good. That jives with the fact that we should have an upward delta l. And remember that torque is equal to delta l, the change in l over delta t. So the torque vector should point this upward in this picture because delta L did. Let's take another example. Let's talk about a disk that's slowing down. In other words, its angular acceleration points downward. This is one where the velocity vector processes around the rim of the disk, but its magnitude gets smaller and smaller because the disk is slowing down, kind of like you spun a record player and eventually it just slows down out of friction. Notice that the velocity vector final is smaller in magnitude than v naught, and likewise, omega final is smaller than omega naught. And now, delta omega is pointing downward. Delta omega is the difference. Well, it's the omega final minus omega naught, and omega naught was bigger than omega final. And since delta omega points down, delta L points down as well. So the, the change in angular momentum is a, is a vector that points down. That's okay. That has to make sense to us. And if we think about uh, velocity decreasing, that must mean that there's a force pointing against it. It might be that you're putting your finger along the side of this disk to slow it down. And where would that force that's pointing backwards come from? Well, it would come from friction on your finger, for example. And that would point against the direction of motion. That's the only thing that would make velocity decrease. Well, if, lot, if force is pointing to the left, like I drew there, in green, then r cross f, where I take 
my right hand and I start with a radial vector pointing from the pivot point out to where that force vector is and then curl my fingers to the left to reach where that force vector is, my thumb now points down. And that means that the torque vector, R cross F, should be pointing down as well. And that jives with the fact that delta L is pointing down. So what seems to be working out well is that the torque vector always points in the same direction as delta L. And that should happen because torque is supposed to be the change in angular momentum divided by delta T. And that seems to be working out. A downward delta L should imply a downward torque as well. And if torque is really delta L over delta T, then torque should be pointing down. And it looks like that works out well when we compute or try to take the cross product of R cross F. R cross F does really point down, it's giving us a downward torque, just like we expect. So we have to think about angular momentum as something that points along the, the angular velocity vector, and its changes track the changes in angular velocity, or in other words, it goes in the same, its changes go in the same direction as the angular acceleration. And delta L will go up or down just like torque goes up or down, which is the same as when angular acceleration goes up or down.